they don't communicate well. They make others feel dumb. They're disorganized. They're disconnected. They're lazy. They're arrogant. They're critical. They don't know what they're talking about. These are some of the descriptives that are used for being a, as they like to say, a lazy teacher. Now, when it comes to those teachers that the red flags show up, it's usually the ones that will come in just when the kids are getting in, but it's also the ones that leave when the kids are running out. And, oh, a terrible teacher is one that doesn't really, you know, make sure they give up their time and attention all the time and be well prepared for their students. You know, like during your lunch period, you should really stop what you're doing and help a child out. Because we want to take care of our own selves. We're being considered lazy. We're being considered inconsiderate. But when the fact is, all we want to do, we spend so much time, so much effort, so much energy, so much money, just to be able to spend time with your child, be able to build them up. And in order for them to be able to step out into this crazy world, which right now doesn't make sense to anybody, and we want them to be successful. We want them to be independent learners. We want them to be able to be creative and expressive. But then we always deem the ones that are doing the creativity. The Mr. Rogers of the world. You know, the yellow school buses of the world. Why? Why is it so hard and so intensive, but yet each and every year, there's always a new graduate that wants to get into the heart of that, that wants to be a teacher. So what really inspired today's talk is I saw, let me see if I can pull this bad boy up. I saw a screenshot and I'm going to try not to have that person's name, which I didn't, you know, I'm a little considerate. And this is what was very heartbreaking to me. So this is a person that taught for 22 years and planned on teaching one, maybe three more years at the elementary level. The beginning of the week three this year, I was at the grocery store before school, picking up my lunch and candy for my second graders, where I started having stroke symptoms. I drove myself and left, let my boss a text and a voicemail that I was on the way to the ER. I was admitted and kept for two days. The doctors were running all kinds of tests and my blood pressure was not under control. I let my boss know that I would, be, would not be back until the following Monday, you know, by request of a neurologist. What did I get? You should have notified your team you were out. Our class has nothing to do for two days. You left no emergency plans, etc. I was still in the hospital. Then when I get home, a teammate wants me to write two days of lesson plans. I did one and crashed. It took hours. The next day, my family doctor put me on FMLA. I'm in physical therapy two days a week in the pool for one and on land for the other. I'm having trouble with my left side. I'm unable to work a half day teaching yet. My doctor, my doctor, sorry. My husband does not want me to go back to that building since the principal's test caused my blood pressure to soar and the nurse has to give me medication to bring down my heart rate and blood pressure. I think about private tutoring. I miss teaching. The only error that I see right now is that last statement. Just because you're doing private tutoring does not mean that you're missing teaching. This is just one example. And you're probably saying, well, Audrey, you know, that's probably just one person. But that's happened to me. I was, and still am, one of those hard-nosed teachers. Like that teacher that was just like, okay, the kids need this. All right, good. I'm going to volunteer. And one year I was working at a school. The kids said, we want to do a talent show. Ms. Audrey, we need your help. We need organization. Why me? 
because you're one of the most organized people that we know. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Two weeks of rounding up high schoolers. Two weeks of, okay, we need the lighting here. We need that there. We need this organized. I need for you to be quiet. Giving up my lunch. Giving up my afternoons. And some of them giving up my weekends. Just to make sure that they are getting the talent show of the year. Something that they always wanted to do. Talent show went off. Everyone loved it. Fully packed. It was a Thursday night. By Friday, went to teach my class. And I said, all right, I'm really tired. But you know what? I'm going to go and teach my class. It's Friday. I can get it done. Close to the end of first period. All of a sudden, I'm feeling nauseous. I'm feeling lightheaded. And I have a shooting pain going up my left arm. I called my principal and said, I am going to the hospital right now. Called my doctor. I will see you at the hospital right now. Not asking, tell them. And once I went to that, they're just like, um, you're just like this other lady. You're having symptoms of having a stroke. And I had to take off four days. And I'm a type of person, I never take days off. Even in my business, I never take days off. Because I always was there for the students. I was always there to make sure that, oh, we're going to have an event. I was always there to make sure that the auditorium was cleaned up because we shared our auditorium with the lower school. And I always made sure that the trash was put away because you'd be surprised how much milk has been in trash cans for weeks. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, okay. Well, we're having prom. Okay. Everyone does all their things. I do my things. I do my things for my seniors. I do my things for the juniors. I was one of those teachers that did. Oh, okay. We need um, chaperones for the football game. This is why I don't go to football games because it's freezing. <laughs> but I did it. I even went to wrestling matches. Most people don't chaperone wrestling matches. They don't think about it. And I was a basketball coach. So we were in the same season, but I will help chaperone. We have people that are being overshadowed because there's a lot of people that will say, oh, well, teachers are lazy. They don't put their grades in. I'm like, teachers, a lot of us are not only just staying in the classroom from this time to this time. A lot of us, especially if you teach those um, special areas like math and English, that's constantly being assessed to death. And if there is any special ed kids in that classroom, that means we're going to special ed rooms and meetings each and every day. I worked at a school at one time. I had 20 IEP meetings in one week. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not. And I just wonder, why do we speak so ill of people that are here and dedicate their time, their energy, their money, sometimes their sanity, just to teach your child? And it's not, okay, let's just put them in front of a TV screen and then go ahead, push play. Like we're breaking things down. But if a child doesn't want to learn, and doesn't see the importance of it, which is tough because it's a kid. Because they're emulating what they're learning and what they're hearing in their households. I could teach my child better. Do it. We got something called homeschool. And I know a lot of parents want to homeschool their kids. They feel like, especially during the pandemic, that, look, the schools aren't doing it. They're not teaching my child everything that I feel they should know. They don't teach the kids how to do finances. I remember one year, been teaching for a minute, guys. I remember one year that the principal was highly upset that a lot of our AP and honors kids were taking personal finance. Everybody needs personal finance. But it all comes down to a couple things like how 
we value education, how we value our students, how we value our teachers. So yes, when I come in here and I'm saying, hey guys, <laughs> let's help our teachers out. Or hey, teachers, if you're thinking about leaving, if you want to be an online tutor, you can do that. You can achieve. Am I sitting here saying I'm living the dream? I know I just pissed off my friend Andy for a second there because he hates that phrase. But I don't think I'm living a dream. I don't think I'm living my reality. You know why? Because after all the cloud of constantly dedicating myself, after removing myself from the stress and strain of years and years of not eating well, not using the facilities properly as my body wants to do, be able to break down concepts to a few children instead of a whole entire horde and getting students for me since I was able to, as they like to say, control my classroom, they decide to reward me with more kids that other teachers say that they can't control. I remember one year I had 41 kids in my classroom, 41 kids. And me being the person that I am, I made sure I controlled that classroom. I made sure that every single child had some kind of learning. They walked out of there that day with something. And even if it was just a smile, a hug, and maybe once in a while, if you were in my SAT prep class, and if it was a Friday, we had Family Guy Friday because they're kids. Just because they're in high school, it doesn't mean that they do not value stickers. <clears throat> Public announcement. High school kids love stickers. But sometimes we forget. We automatically assume that when a kid gets out of high school, they're good. Or when they enter high school, they're even great. They're older now. We don't have to pay attention to them. No. So, when it comes to a person that's entering into the field of teaching, it's just very, it is so much deeper than what it is. But if you don't value us, we can't move forward. So here's another one I just saw the other day. Um, I feel used and abused. Daily disrespected. I knew the expectations and the workload was unreal, but I couldn't really pinpoint what it was. I can now. My priorities are this, planning, teaching, grades, monitoring, um, small groups. This is a full-time job plus all meetings. I have amazing results, amazing data. I believe I don't have any disciplinary issues except for something that happened last week. When someone comes and tells me, now you need to do this too, and this too, and you got to do this exactly this way. You can't think on your own. Oh, plus <laughs> this too. I totally feel abused because this will have to be done on my own time if I want it to get it done. Every time they come with the attitude of do this, I feel like it's abuse because it comes time from my family and my life and I can't get it done in school because I already have that full-time job of babysitting and tracking. So respect sounds like this. I think you should say more so in this opinion, would you like to do this on your free time? And to that person, when I responded back to her, I'm like, they're not gonna do that because you are working in an institution. What else? resembles an institution. Prison. When you go from one school to another, what's that called? A transfer. What else transfers? A prison. Things are not going to really change because originally I really wanted to say, you know, teaching in the classroom 2018 really doesn't switch so much from teaching in the classroom in 2023. The only thing is the pace is a lot faster. 
And it seems like a lot of our district people have forgotten that we just had a pandemic and we're still going through it, but it's just not as intense or in your face as it was. So now the kids, you have to realize there were some teachers that really didn't care. They're like, okay, yeah, check in. All right. Because no one was instructed how to do online teaching, how to do online instruction, how to use Google Classroom. And I remember sitting on a professional development that they said, you have one day to go through 15 videos of how to use Google Classroom and you need to start it the next day. First of all, how to sign into Google Classroom. <laughs> what is Google Classroom? Okay, I know what Google is, but where do I find Google Classroom? And believe it or not, that was the first part of the video they skipped. So I always want to say that it's the same song, but it's just a different record. You ever hear certain things that people will say, and you're just like, oh man, that's so innovative. But when you're in the classroom for a long period of time, you're just like, I've heard that before. Oh wait, what did they call it back then? Teaching. Or now what are they calling it? Common core. And I want to call it common sense. You give us a curriculum, but then midway through the year, oh yeah, forget that. We're not going to do that. We're going to do this curriculum. Then we do this curriculum for like a month. Oh, well, you know what? Let's go to this curriculum. And everybody's like, oh, this is so innovative. And then of course us seasoned oldies would be like, dude, we've been teaching out of that book <laughs> since my first year, <laughs> like 10 years ago. And it was great. And we still don't know why you guys decided to change it. So I'm going to talk a little bit. And if you're here, go ahead, hit hashtag live. If you're here for the replay, hit hashtag replay. I don't feel like doing the algorithm thing. But my thing is, it's got to shift. Because everyone's so busy uh, to complaining. Oh, one minute this child has a teacher and the next minute they're gone. And everyone's just like, well, why? She's such, such a great teacher. And a lot of our awesome teachers are leaving. The ones that do these extra little bits. And because someone was salty about it, they're the ones that are just like, no, this teacher is not that good. But real quick, why are some of these people leaving? A lot of people say, oh, it's the money, Audrey. <laughs> they're not getting paid enough. I'm like, duh. Seriously. You think the money has always been a major factor when it came to teachers? Of course. This is probably the beginning of time. You don't pay for what you don't understand. So why not? You knew when you were going to go to college to do and learn how to be a teacher, you knew you weren't going to get paid that much. Everybody knows. But you did it for the compassion. Another reason why? Unreasonable expectations. Prime example from the person I just read. That's just a small take. So parents, when you're just like, oh, my child had a test, and why isn't the grade not in the grade book already? They just had it? Yes. School day's not even over. Breathe. <laughs> like, you know? Or one minute we have to teach. Next minute, oh, okay, we got a meeting. And we go to these meetings, and sometimes uh, these meetings put in the email. But the reason why we're having the meeting is because she knows a lot of people won't read the email. But I know when situations come up, a kid was coming into the school, the pressures of children, someone freaked out, someone did this, there was a fight here, but there's going to be times like, all right, teachers, I need for you to do more. What more can we do? Because sometimes it's more out of our control. But yet, let's do one more thing. Let's make that change. Another thing is just an inability to protect our well-being. I already mentioned that. I could have died at my desk. And for me, that's an interesting way to go. But there's a lot of teachers that know every time they get up, they're like, oh, God, I got to deal with that kid. When you send the kid out and this kid comes back with a granola bar, literally five minutes later, and one minute he was just threatening your life, 
and then you don't get that support. And I understand, but sometimes we have to understand what is that support. And you as a teacher, if you're not proclaiming what kind of support you want, sometimes they're not going to do that. And then plus, as I keep saying, I love my principals, but they don't control the school. They're not the ones that control it. Parents do. But if the parents only care about prom and they only care about all the celebratory things, it makes it hard for everybody. So one of the things I always keep saying, like when, especially when I had my little episode, I feel like there needs to be an additional repertoire when it comes to teachers, or not teachers, when it comes to doctors, when they're asking their questions. And one of the things that I really think they should be asking is, what is your occupation? I'm going to tell you the truth. There'll be so much relief. So many people that, oh, your blood pressure is really high. Oh, you got to change your diet. You got to do this. You got to do that. Here, you got to take these pills. You got to take those pills. Just talk to me. And this is how you should come. Miss Audrey, uh, we're talking to you. Your blood pressure is high. Yeah, you were close to having a stroke. And what, what's going on? What do you do? Because once someone says, I'm a teacher, I'm like, yep, I got you. You need time to reflect on your next bit. Because right now, this is a stressful situation. It's a stressful situation. It's damn near warfare. Each and every day. But then there's those some of those kids that we really stretch a lot of stuff because we see potential in that child and we really want them to grab onto it. And that's what motivates us to keep going. Yeah, we'll deal with our bladder issues. Yeah, we're just going to love iced coffee. Maybe it's watered down by now, but, you know, it's the elixir. But if they ever just take a moment just to say or ask, what is your occupation? And people realizing that being a teacher is damn like going into war, especially the ones that care. So teachers, listen to me. If you're thinking about going, don't go from one institution to another. Don't do that transfer. Because all you're going to do is just bring that ignorance and all that craziness into that other school. As much as you will try your hardest, you're still going to transfer all that stuff out. Take a moment. Before you go on your Facebook and before you start bashing everybody like I am, <laughs> take a moment. Write down. Like, literally, take a moment. Go into a room. Close the door. If it, if you have to go into your car, because we all know that's what we got to do, go to your car in a well-lit area. <laughs> Make sure the door's locked. Have a small journal. And literally, time yourself for 10 minutes. And then write down what exactly you want to do. Because it was really sad when I asked a lady... How did you get into teaching? She said, my parents told me I had to be a teacher. So that means all this time you've never had a chance to live your life. Write down what you want to do. This is the one life. I, I mean, there's probably a lot of people that are Buddhists that are out there. But you need to write down what exactly that you want to do and then also put it into action. So getting close to the closing of this. There's a lot of things that people think that teachers want. And I know we all want a living wage, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. What exactly that we want? We want to be valued. Same thing as a tutor. We want to be valued. People keep talking about education, but sometimes they're not showing, their actions are not showing that they value education. That's why tutors are pricing the way they are. That's why there's a variant, because some people will know their value and some people won't. There's a lot of teachers, they just want to feel valued. 
They want to be appreciated, not just this whole Hulk appreciation week where you give us candy and you bake us cookies and we get another mug. <laughs> okay. Don't need any more mugs. Thanks. I know. And for me, I'm like, I don't drink coffee, but we gave you a Starbucks card. Like, thanks. But, um, I don't drink coffee. You don't know me enough. You just basically try to put me in a category as what society thinks that teachers need. We need to be valued. We need to be compensated for all the things we do. Stop giving us scraps and expecting a big, huge buffet to come from it. And teachers know your value because you're going to get burned out. Don't wait until you're about to have a stroke or actually have a stroke because as soon as you knock off, guess what's going to happen? They're just going to have little Becky, James, Jerome, and maybe even Laquanda, and they're going to take your spot because how much they're paying you, they can get four young, fresh teachers, fresh out the box to come take your spot. That's what they want until they realize their value. And then guess what? We go back. Hey, I can get four more for each of those people. You're replaceable in their eyes. But you have kids. You have a family. You have a life. You have to understand your value. And there's this is something that you got to fight for. You fight for everything else. You fight for the kids' education. They need better books. You do it each and every time, but you won't do it for yourself. Why? So what should I do, Audrey? Should I leave? Should I just jump ship? It's up to you. I can't tell you what you want to do. But if you're really sick and tired of living the life that you want to live, then change it. Do some research. Try to find somebody that is excelling in whatever you want to do. And be truthful to yourself. Follow that person. Ask them questions. Not just because they just want your money. Like they truly want to care about you. And then follow in that lead. But then put it in your own twist. Because if you try to be a mini version of that other person. All you did was a mental transfer. Get back to yourself. Get back to what you want to do. Get back to you, but improve yourself. Don't go backwards in life. Always want to move forward, knowing your value, knowing your worth, and go after it. So that concluded my TED Talk. <laughs> and I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So if anything, if you are a teacher and you really want to move to that next step, you're like, you know what? I still want to teach. I still want to teach and I still value education, but I just can't handle all this foolishness. And you want someone to talk to, you can talk to me. I'm here. I'm on Facebook. Um, you can go to my Facebook group, which is from the classroom to online tutoring. It's a virtual community. You can ask questions. We're going to be showing up some events. I have some um, events that's possibly coming up for the holidays. And I'm going to be truthful with you. So for all that are here, I greatly appreciate you. Yes. <laughs> Someone's on my TED Talk. I have a couple of lives. Um, definitely have Miss Cheryl. If you don't know Cheryl, you definitely want to reach out to her. Um, and she just does great things for other teachers as well. So we're all here. You're not by yourself. There is a lot of Facebook groups out there that are, we're always going to complain about our job. I'm a type of person. I don't just complain. I put things into action. So if you really want to come on down and if anything, tomorrow, for our two tutors talking, you're going to be talking to me um, because I'm actually going to share my journey from being in the classroom to online tutoring. I'm going to be as transparent as can be. I'm going to tell you some of the things about tutoring. I'm going to tell you some of the things to watch out for, some of the things that you should look forward to. 
So that'll be tomorrow at 11 a.m. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Continue to be awesome because you are valued in my eyes. I know what you guys do in your work. Even if you're not a teacher and you have maybe a spouse of a teacher or maybe you were a child of a teacher and maybe you're doing something else, but your work is truly valued, not just in your eyes, but someone else needs you to create whatever product or service you're creating. All right, guys, have a good one and take care.